So this video for Chem 1211 will be a little bit more about de Broglie wavelengths, the equation, and kind of the significance of these wavelengths. And so the equation for de Broglie wavelength is lambda equals h over p, where p means momentum, which is mass times velocity. So in this case, because of the units on h, because h is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. Because of those units there of joules, that means that we have to work with specific units with mass and velocity. A joule is defined as a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So this means that our mass actually has to be in kilograms and our velocities will be meters per second, just like when we were working with the speed of light. Now the really crazy thing here with de Broglie wavelengths is that this allows us to relate the speed and the wavelength of a particle. Whereas for light, even though light could act like a particle and it was a would be and which was what we called a photon light had its own equation where c equaled lambda nu for relating the speed and the wavelength of light in this case for particles the speed and the de broglie wavelength we can't just use the same particle that we could use for light and that's because of one of those quirks about light and the speed of light. And if you have a particle and a particle is approaching the speed of light, then it takes more and more and more energy to get closer and closer and closer to that speed of light. And in that energy, instead of going into the velocity of the particle, it goes into what we know from relativistic effects is actually called the mass of the particle or what's called the relativistic mass of a particle. And so you can look that up online if you're interested in relativistic properties of particles or relativistic energies of electrons. These do become important as we start to look at heavier elements on the periodic table. This is one reason why mercury is a liquid. And this is another reason why several of the newer elements that have been synthesized may have different chemical properties than what would be predicted based on the groups that they are in in the periodic table. So back to the de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength is specifically for a particle. And so let's calculate the de Broglie wavelength for an average person. So the de Broglie wavelength would be Planck's constant An average person would set, be said to weigh about 70 kilograms. And I'm just going to say that's got two sig figs here for now. And let's say that this person, let's say they're moving pretty quickly, they're running or whatever. And so they have a velocity of one meter per second. And let's go ahead and say that's got two sig figs as well. So then you can just plug this into your calculator. You can take a look at the exponent and you realize that it's not really being divided by a whole lot. 70 is kind of close to 100. And so this exponent actually goes down by two. And the de Broglie wavelength for an average person who would be running is 9.5 times 10 to the negative 36 meters. This is super small which is one reason why when you look around and you look at people, you don't see people vibrating in place or shifting from side to side. There's, there's certainty about where people are because their de Broglie wavelengths are so small. So what if we move this up and instead of talking about a person, now let's talk about a neutron. And so the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength for a neutron moving at the same speed of one meter per second
the mass of a neutron you can look up is 1.67 4929 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms times 1 meter per second still 1.0 for two sig figs and let's make it three and you calculate 3.96 times 10 to the negative seventh meters well let's think about this for a second what if I move the decimal two places to the right if I move the decimal two places to the right what happens to the exponent the exponent should decrease whenever you move the decimal to the right the exponent goes down so this becomes 396 times 10 to the negative ninth meters what prefix is the same as 10 to the negative ninth nano so this is 396 nanometers which as you may recall is going to be in the ultraviolet region of light in terms of equating this to regions of light so because of the wavelength of this because this is specifically for a neutron neutrons can actually be used to do uh, microscopy you can look at materials using neutrons you can do something called small angle neutron scattering in order to be able to image materials with neutrons why might that be interesting well visible light is going to be absorbed in those materials whereas neutrons will not be absorbed they will just be slightly scattered or deflected and so you can use them to actually peer deeper into physical materials to investigate their underlying structures and this is usually done at a neutron source and so this is a really interesting effect or a really interesting application from de Broglie wavelengths so let's move from a neutron to an electron and let's look at an electron that's really slow and let's say that electron is moving well yeah that's not too bad let's say that electron is moving at one meter per second still now let's move on from looking at the neutron and let's look at an electron and let's say that electron is still moving at 1.0 meters per second but the mass of that electron is about 2,000 times less than the mass of the neutron and so the mass of that electron is 9.109390 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms and so this electron that's moving very slowly 7.3 times 10 to the negative fourth meters this is around the millimeter range and so this really is somewhere closer to where microwaves are what if that electron speeds up some let's say that electron is moving at one percent of the speed of light so we have a fast electron here this electron now is 6.626 times 10 to the negative fourth joule seconds still 9.109390 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms and the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second if we're moving at one percent of that speed we're moving a hundred times slower so the speed of this fast electron is now about 3 million meters per second that means that this wavelength is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 10th meters well that's 24 nanometers this is smaller than the normal 
wavelengths for light and this electron is so small in terms of its wavelength that it can't interact with light very easily and it's also not going to be visible to the naked eye for humans but we can use these electrons again an application of this we use electrons use electrons to see small stuff that's on the order of this scale so what's on the scale of 24 nanometers or so well larger atoms larger molecules things that are on the size scale that would interact with that wavelength of the electron and so we have things like tunneling electron microscopes scanning electron microscopes and we also have things like electron diffraction then if you want to be able to see even smaller things or see them in even more detail you want a smaller wavelength and so something that's similar to electron diffraction but has a smaller wavelength would be x-ray diffraction so let's go ahead and apply the de Broglie wavelength equation to a photon wait a minute you say how would you do that well what we're going to do is we're going to ask what's the effective momentum of a photon so if we're treating light as a particle how much momentum would a single photon actually impart to something and so we want to solve the de Broglie wavelength equation for m over for m times v for momentum and so then that momentum equals Planck's constant over the wavelength so for our photon let's use that green laser pointer again so we have Planck's constant over 532 times 10 to the negative ninth meters recall that that joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared by having that as joules times seconds one of those seconds cancels out note that the meters in the bottom from the wavelength also cancel out with one of the meters from the Planck's constant and so the units we're left with are kilogram meters per second which looks like a mass times a velocity and when you work through this I only kept two sig figs in my notes but you get a momentum of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms kilogram meters per second and just for comparison's sake a paper clip which is a mass somewhere around a gram or 10 to the negative third kilograms if that's moving at one meter per second then that has a momentum of one times 10 to the negative third kilogram meters per second so a paper clip has 10 to the 24th times more momentum like a mole's worth of momentum more than that one single photon so what effect does this have well this means that light does have momentum and that you can actually use light to propel things and this is the idea behind using light sails to propel objects through space and you can look up light sails online and there's an organization called the planetary society which has already launched one satellite and is about to launch a second one which will make use of light sails for their propulsion